It's such a pleasure to be able to speak to you today. Um, I understand it's your first uh, fiction film. How did you decide that this was the right uh, tool, like the right medium for this story? Well, there's, the great, there's a great documentary that exists called The Other Shore, and most of the events were in the past when we were thinking about the film. So it was, I think you don't see very many roles for women of this complexity, and so here was an opportunity to create two great roles that are very rich. And, you know, it seemed like the way to bring it to life would be through a narrative feature. Mm -hmm. Um, but you also use some of the original footage uh, mm -hmm. and you decided to keep the real people in, you know, rather than the forced Gump version of superimposing the actor's faces, so it's not to tear the audience. The Irishman. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, could you speak a little bit about this decision? No, I'm so happy you noticed. Um, that was, it's a real testament to the strength of Annette's performance, of Annette Bening's performance, because somehow the mind just accepts it, that 1978 Diana. And it, I don't know, like, we, it was a real gamble. We didn't know if it would work. And then, like, after our first few screenings, we're like, oh, it's going to absolutely work. And I think there's something interesting in that it is based on a true story that we're using real footage to remind kind of people that this woman really swam 110 mm -hmm. miles. You know, this really happened. But the going back and forth with the, with the old footage and, and the new sh shoots is a tribute to the directors. It's so seamless. It's yeah. so seamless that you barely can tell that there's a, a, a different scene coming on. And, like, to tell you the truth, I mean, that there's really nothing sexier than the real Diane and I had on the Jimmy Carson show. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I love that show. scene. I mean, like, she's amazing. You yeah. can't really, like, you, and that's amazing, but yeah. that is yeah. just an incredible scene. Absolutely. Yeah. To be played by Jodie Foster. It's phenomenal. Yes, yeah. <laughs> phenomenal. Um, did you have any say in the casting? Was like, I have to be played by Jodie Foster. No, 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 no. You, I can just be happy about it now. Yeah. Uh, no, we had nothing. I had nothing to do with the movie. And I, it was a pleasure for me to sort of get to know Jodie, for her to get to know me. And boy, she nailed it. Absolutely. I mean, sitting across you now, yeah. it's like the mannerisms. <laughs> yes. It's yeah. very eerie. <laughs> um, but you, you got to spend time with her it's for her to... Yes. Yes, spending lots to. of time and still spending time. I mean, I th believe we've become pretty good friends. That's amazing. Um, how, could you speak a little bit of the casting decisions? It always had to be Annette. I, I just, I, it was really important for us to cast age appropriately. So we were looking for women, like female actors who are in their 60s. So Annette's 64. Um, Diane and I had achieved her last swim when she was 64. And... You know, I don't know, it just had to be Annette. She's such a great actor, and we were so pleased when she said yes, also because she was willing to put in the physical training that was required by the role, as well as not afraid to play a complicated, sometimes not so likable, sometimes, you know, too ambitious woman. Like, she was, it was unabashed, the kind of her willingness to mm -hmm. throw herself into the role. And so we were really excited when she said yes. Um, you just said you had nothing or little to do with the movie, but was there any kind of collaboration between you and Diana? Um, Di well, it's based on a book that Diana mm -hmm. wrote, but, you know, to Diana and Bonnie's great credit, they kind of let us do our thing. They didn't get involved. Um, and they came to set once, which was really exciting, but there was something about, I really admire how they were able to let go, because I certainly wouldn't be able to do it, but it, it was great. So, um, and I'm happy that they're, you know, we're okay now, but still, you know, it's we were, not so involved. We were out to dinner with some friends and um, a good friend who's a producer and had nothing to do with this movie. And Diana said, well, what if I played myself? The producer said, well, do you want people to see the movie? Just like that. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> um, the music also plays an important part. Um, there is uh, there are these instances she even um, tells us about uh, humming the songs in her head to the beat of her strokes. Um, but you also worked closely with uh, Alexandre Desplat on the score. Could you perhaps uh, let us know about the decision? So right? the needle drops, you know, the songs like the Janis Joplin or the Paul Simon, um, are part of Diana's like psyche. Like she used these songs. Um, to train and to get through these hours and hours and hours of swimming. And so we thought it was really important to include them, which created um, a fun challenge for Alexander because 
he was like, does because all those songs are four four beat, and he's like, does the score need to be in four four? It, it was it. I have to say, like, it was a real pleasure to work with Alexander. He is, you know, a consummate you know artist, and you, he's like one of those people who you're with. You can see the creativity, you see mm. it happening, and he created a script a score that I could never have imagined beforehand. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Um, so that was that was that was really special. You know, as a, as a just a common viewer, I now know what it takes to to get a movie like this or any movie done. There are four hundred people. Everybody's working. Everybody's working, and I got to see behind the scenes, which was great. Like usually, we just see the finished product. I got to see it during, mm -hmm. which was wonderful. Amazing. Uh, you just mentioned Psyche. That's also such a eye-opening part to see her you know become delusional at some point because you're in the water for so long and um, I imagine that's also an important um, topic in the book but how did you um, decide when to use um, these elements well they she would normally hallucinate like after 35 hours in the water okay. or more and it was important to use them I think we were trying really hard to invite an audience to go on this pretty crazy and difficult journey with Diana and trying to express like where her her mind would go mm -hmm. and how separate she is from her own body and also how critical her support Bonnie is as well as the whole team on the boat because she's not herself like she's not there um, the, the hallucinations were an opportunity it was also an opportunity for some some levity mm -hmm. in the film and some you know humor <laughs> Yeah. And they were real. Hallucinations are real. And they're kind of fascinating. Like, yeah. that's where the mind goes when you've overdone something. Amazing. I think we're out of time. Thank you so much for Thank taking you. your welcome. Welcome.